Welcome to the Lynn Mass Sportscast, a program which focuses on sports right here in Lynn. We highlight Lynn sports action through student athlete interviews and discussing the X's and O's with the coaches of Lynn. What you can expect to see from us are the game of the week, stories from the field and the sideline sportscast, and of course, the question of the week. The Lynn Mass Sportscast strives to bring viewers like you all the up-to-date news and info as we cover all sports in Lynn. Co-produced by Lynn Cam TV and Lynn Educational Television, this is the Lynn Mass Sportscast. Welcome to the Lynn Mass Sportscast. I'm your sportscast host, Sean Donahue, and we've got a great show for you today. We'll be having Patrick Kogan on to talk about his most recent struggles and successes with FA. We'll be meeting with some of the gladiator-level Lynn Chargers to discuss their upcoming playoff game. But first, let's go to this week's Game of the Week. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Mayfield on a... Gorgeous day here. Locked. Locked again by Glasgow. Pops up. Off the head by Benavides. The Shibu knocked it in. He was just outside the five yard line. He knocked it through a maze of white shirts. I don't think Kyle Arsenal ever saw it. He put it in very quickly. They knocked it deep. Hooks to the middle. Headed away nicely by Agabon. Deflects all the way back. Glasgow knocks it back the other way. Headed away. The sheep will collect. Kawaro knocks it deep the other way. The Shibu with it. He's got the goal. That's the difference right now. Long lead pass floats. He pops it up in the middle and takes a big hop. That's what trying to control. They take the shot and it goes in. Gertie a falling down, got the shot. Arsenal looked like he had it. It went right through the fingertips just inside the near post. Broken up by Sibu. So he gets it back. Deep pass. De Jesus trying to walk in, broken up, and Glasgow takes it away. Stolakis take the corner kick, hooks it to the middle, off an English head. Sibu knocks it by, Gurdia starting it back. Ogerak gets it to Benavides, gets around, gets around another. Directing traffic, trying to send people to the net. Hanmo pops it up, he's gonna hook. Coming back. He hooked it from the 25, it was gonna come all the way back to midfield. And it did. When it bounced and came back. Gertie it dumps it ahead. Way popped it loose. Way trying to get there, and Way knocks it in. Way had two on one, he tried to tip the pass across, it bounced off the goaltender. And when it bounced off the goaltender, Way got it back and knocked it into the far corner. Makes it three nothing. Welcome back to the Lynn Mass Sportscast. I'm here right now with Patrick Kogan. Patrick is a sports kind of personality, Lynn. You've probably seen him in the papers recently. He's been down at the schools and talking to the kids about perseverance, uh, motivation, and determination. Um, Pat, your story's incredible. We've had you on the show before. Um, let's talk a little bit about FA, what it is so the viewership at home knows, and then we're going to talk a little bit some of your successes. Uh, first and foremost, thanks for coming on to the program. <laughs> thanks for having me, Sean. <laughs> My ego always gets in play to when yeah, I come I can on. I know, it's, so, it's huge. You can have me on whenever, <laughs> please. Um, yeah, so I have this disease called Friedrich's ataxia. Um, we call it F.A. Because I can't um, pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, it's a trisponent. <laughs> and, um, and in a nutshell, similar to ALS, so in a nutshell, my brain doesn't communicate 
uh, to very well to the other muscles in my body. So obviously growing up, that would make playing sports and being active very difficult. Um, and that's one thing um, that I do a lot of now. I do, I'll, I do triathlon gym training from my first half Ironman in September. And um, I really wanted everything I went through I really want to see if, through my experiences in my trials to try and pass it on because if someone came to me when I was in high school and said, hey, you don't have to be the best, but just do something, then I think things would, I would, would be different. I was not active until I was like 27. Yeah. I had learned to swim at 27 to do a triathlon because I didn't know how to swim. So you learned how to swim just to be in a triathlon? Yes. That's something I would never yeah. do. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about uh, the struggles that you face. I mean, FA, um, a lot of people at home really aren't familiar with it. It's great that you can kind of describe it. But I mean, can you give us any examples of maybe um, you know, what you go through on a day to day? You said basically your brain has trouble communicating with your muscles. So um, to tie into talking to the kids, the some examples I use with the kid, obviously my voice. Right. I mean, very raspy, always has been. I have to work a little more now to accentuate when I speak because I know that some people have difficult um, hearing me. Um, an example I use with the kids is if I have a drink, um, you can see I'm shaking, if I have a drink with the straw, I have to work really hard to get that straw in my mouth or it'll end up in my ear. Because my body, my brain is not communicating to my hand really well and where to go. So my hand thinks it's going to my mouth when it's in my ear. <laughs> so and that's wow. why, yeah, walking and stuff like that is Just difficult. Not really in the thing, but I mean, um, we're buddies on Facebook, and I mean, I don't really that that probably actually means more today than it does <laughs> yeah. if we like hung out. But we're, we're buddies on friends Facebook. Friends in the real world, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> online. <laughs> Just online, not in the real world. <laughs> um, but you have all these pictures on, on your Facebook page of you riding and working out, and it's a little misleading. I mean, I know that's not your intent, Pat, but I'm sitting here and I'm looking and I'm like, you know, it's like, I want to say poor Pat, but I'm like, this guy works out and he's in better shape than I am. Well, and, and you humble me by saying that, but I think that's, that's the point. It could be, there are people that have it a lot worse than me. I have it worse than some people, yeah. but it could be so much worse so I, every day, I try to do more. I push myself. And there definitely is a fine line for all the younger viewers. There is definitely a fine line, sick or not, between pushing yourself and hurting yourself. Right. Um, and I've crossed that line a couple times. But so I try to push myself. I mean, this all started with trying to raise money Fafe, I wanted to do a century ride, which is a 100-mile bike ride. Right. I did that in under 12 hours. So from there, I said, what's next? And it spun to a triathlon, and now I'm training for a half Ironman. Half Ironman. Now, what is that? Um, so they have different distance lengths for uh, triathlons. So a half Ironman is a 1.2-mile swim. Now, when I swim, I swim on my back because of the FA. I can't swim on my chest. So I have a guide that will swim with me. It's a 1.2-mile swim, a 56.2-mile bike, and a half marathon. Wow. So we got about three minutes left in the show. I want to talk about some of your recent efforts in going out to the schools and talking to these kids. Um, one thing to really recognize is like the, the struggle. Like any story that you've ever enjoyed or any character that you like on, in, in any type of media, there's usually a moral problem there. And they have to make a decision. And it makes you think as the viewership, could I do that? And I look at you, Pat, and I think, you know, if I was diagnosed with F.A., could I do everything that he did? And I think that that's why it's so enthralling and so thrilling to really hear about it. I know you're not a big advocate of being commended 
it and all that stuff. But I mean, it, it really should be. Um, when it comes down to like going in and talking to the kids, what do you enjoy about it most? So, when you were complimenting me, I totally feel like Sean Astin and Rudy right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I can, I always say, if I can reach one kid, then it's a win. And it, I, I try to show them, look, there's a lot of adversity in the world, whether it's, you know, an educational adversity, uh, something going on at home, a loss of a parent, a disease. It could be so much worse. Right. And you need to just overcome it. It's right. not easy. So I, I'll talk to the kids about that. Um, one thing I'll do with them is we do uh, physical challenges. So I'll bring three or four kids on stage and say, we're gonna do as many push-ups and I'll do them with them as you can do. And they'll stop and I'll say, are you done? And they'll do a few more. And then, you know, you'll upset the kid that <laughs> is gasping for breath. And then I'll say, okay, now we're gonna do 10 more. And we'll do 10 more. And every now and then I'll say, okay, now we're gonna do five more to show them that they can do more than they originally thought that they could do. Outstanding. I mean, what you're doing is, I mean, you're helping develop future citizens of Lynn, and um, you're, you're teaching them about adversity, and it's one of the most important things that you can learn. Um, one of the things that I've heard you say over and over again is that it could be worse, and that's like almost like a family like saying that I've got in the Donahues, um, and I, I tell my grandfather, oh, I had a bad day and everything was tough, and he goes, look, if that's the worst thing that happens to you, you you're going to have a good, good day, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, so again, Pat, I just want to thank you for coming on. Um, Projectwheels.org, still yep. up and running, so, right? Yep, real quick, that is is the uh, the foundation we created to give back to other people with FA. Right. ProjectWales.org. So this is to benefit other people with FA, um, not Pat. It's about reaching out to his community. Uh, these guys are uh, unbelievable. ProjectWales.org. Uh, Pat Kogan, uh, appreciate it. Uh, let's go to this week's question of the week. This is the question of the week. Last week's question was, on October 19, 2014, this NFL quarterback set the NFL's all-time passing touchdown record with 509. Who is he and what team does he play for? Of course, the answer is Peyton Manning. There was no tweet, so there will be no pizza. This week's question is, this NFL quarterback is so good that no team which he's played against has earned their franchise a winning record while playing his. Who is the quarterback? Tweet your answers to our Twitter handle at Lynn Sportscast for your chance to win a free pizza from Tony Lena's on Boston Street. Welcome back, and now for some sports and Lynn news. Wyoming Little League early registration is now open for the 2015 season. Those who register before December 31st will receive a discount. Visit www.wyomalittleleague.com. Your Lynn Chargers will be well represented in the first round of the Northeastern Conference Youth Football League playoffs. Two of the Lynn Chargers football squads will face off this weekend at Bishop Fenwick in Peabody to keep their seasons alive. In the Spartan Division, the 5th and 6th grade Chargers team, which stands at a record of 8-0, will take on the Peabody Black this Sunday at noon. Also on Sunday at 3 p.m., the battle for the Gladiator Division will kick off. The 7th and 8th grade Chargers will go into the playoffs with a record of 7-1 to take on the Beverly Black. Good luck, Chargers. The St. Mary's girls soccer team wraps up a nice victory over Marion this past Monday with a score of 9-1 for their first Division IV playoff win this season. The Spartans advance to the quarterfinals with an 11-6-2 record. The Lady Spartans will face off against the 8-9-2 Winter Vikings. More on that story as it develops. The classical boys soccer team falls to Chelsea in the first round of the Division II tournament with a score of 1-0, a game that would last till double overtime. Classical entered the tournament at a number 13 seed, but would finish their season with a record of 10-7-1. Pretty good record for a 13 seed. Congratulations to the Rams on a great season. On Saturday in Haverhill, the Spartans football team would lose in overtime against the Whittier Tech Wildcats for the Division V North Quarter Final. Connor Sakowicz would have 21 attempts for 92 yards and one touchdown. Abraham Toe scored one of his touchdowns in his 15 attempts and would gain 102 yards total. The Spartans will host Brighton this Friday, the 7th, at Manning Field. Kickoff is at 7 p.m. Go Spartans!
Hi, I'm Nathaniel. You're watching LinCan TV. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us here on the Lynn Mass Sportscast. Here with me now, we've got the Gladiator level Lynn Chargers. Uh, David Bernard, tight end, Jarnell Snow, quarterback, and Carter Clay, the center. Guys, thanks for being here today. Thank you. All right, great. Don't be too excited. All right, anyway, moving forward, I want to talk a little bit about who you guys are and how you got involved in sports, um, primarily football, since it is the season. Um, so, David, we'll start with you. Tell me a little bit about why you started playing football. Well, this is my first year playing football, and my coach Clay told me that I was going to be playing with all my friends and I just realized that was going to be a lot of fun so I decided to play. Now are you liking it so yeah, far? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. A lot of kids, I mean, you know, in coaching you, you deal with kids and the biggest obstacle to get over really is like the hitting side of things. How, how did you adapt to that? Well, I just liked hitting anyway so right. I didn't really <laughs> Plus you're probably good. bigger than a lot of these kids too. Yeah, I'm pretty all big right. so. Cool. Alright, uh, Jenna, let's talk about you. You're quarterback. A lot of responsibility for you. Yeah. Um, a lot of the leadership has to be done in your end and it doesn't happen with this. It's all about yeah. example. Um, let's talk a little bit about you and how you started playing football. Well, I started in fifth grade and at first my brother started playing so I just said if he's playing I guess I'll play and my first year I just started quarterback. So since then I thought it would be fun. Now, does your brother play football in Lynn? Yeah. Okay. Who's that? Um, Kanye, but he's lower level. He's a lower level. He started before me. But you got two athletes in the family who are moving up. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Um, now, Carter, let's talk a little bit about you. Um, how'd you get involved? You're a center. Awesome yeah. position. I'm a little biased towards <laughs> it uh, for my own reasons, but there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Yeah. Why'd you start playing the game? I started playing the game because my brother was playing high school football at the time and my dad was his coach and so he had me play for Eastland before I came to Chargers and well then I just switched over to Chargers when my dad did. So how long have you been playing football? Seven years. And you're in what grade? Eighth. Eighth grade? You've been, you've been playing football longer than you haven't been. That's <laughs> incredible. Where are you planning on going to high school? I plan on either going to Classical or Essex Tech. All right, Essex Aggie. Look, if you're gonna go to private school, it'd be nice if you could come over to St. Mary's. <laughs> um, all you guys, I mean, you know, I'm a little biased towards that place because that's where I coach too. Uh, but you guys got a nice meal down there. You joined the team. Um, that's good. So let's talk a little bit about the information of your team, uh, the Lynn Chargers. For those of us at home who may not be aware, um, what's the basic function? Uh, Janelle, can you take this one? Um, well, we work as a team. And when like a teammate's down or like injured, we help them up. And if someone doesn't know the play on offense or defense, we kind of like help them and get them ready to go in and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, so scout, that's very important. Um, now the Lynn Chargers, uh, where do you guys practice? Um, we switched to um, Barry Park. Now you're down at Barry Park. Yeah. And you play your games at Manning? Yeah, and our home games. So that's cool. Must be a really neat feeling walking through those gates. And I mean, there's a lot of history that happened not on that field, but at that location. Yeah. Um, you learn about mm -hmm. that a little bit more. Now you guys have had some recent success. This Sunday, 3 o'clock, you guys are going to be playing in the first round of the playoffs for the North Northeastern Conference Youth Football League. And you guys are going to be taking on who? Beverly Black. Beverly. All right, so Beverly Black. Uh, what's really neat for these football fans at home is that uh, these guys are really competing in the Northeastern Conference among the youths. Um, so if you played a classical, there's a good chance that they're going to play uh, the same teams that you played, Salem, Peabody, Beverly. Um, who, else is, who else is in the league? Swamp Scott. Swamp Scott. All right, so mainly the North, North, Northeast kind yeah. of guys, North Shore guys. Now, you guys finished your regular season at a record of 7-1. and one. Uh, What was the team that gave you some problems? Beverly White. Beverly White, okay. Now, you're playing Beverly Black yeah. this week. Okay, so what's the difference between the white team and the black team? There's not really a no. difference. Some dudes, different guys? Yeah. All right. Um, so now when it comes down to success, okay, uh, one of the really cool things about football is that like it's all about preparation. Football's a lifestyle. And you can't really just show up on game days and expect to play. Um, there's a certain feeling that comes over you when you win a game. And um, I mean, you guys have already experienced that already. But when it comes to success, uh, Carter, what do you think that's attributed to? Um, it's contributed but, um, to how we like act differently towards like other people that aren't like on our team because when we treat our teammates with respect, we, te we treat each other with other people with respect. And um, Respect right. all, fear nobody, yeah. right? 
That's a great philosophy. Um, you know, football philosophy is uh, it's very diverse, and when you get into the higher levels of the game, whether it be college or professional, um, everybody has their own way of doing things. If you've seen any post-game speeches um, between uh, Bill Belichick and, and Rex Ryan, you can see how different these guys are. Uh, when it comes to football philosophy, can you speak to that? I mean, what do you guys adopt? I mean, what, what's it all about down there at Barry Park when you're practicing with your team? Who wants to take this one? I, I will. Cool. Um, it's pretty much like us getting to know the game the best we can, and it's also for us so that we can succeed like in playoffs now. Because a lot of the kids, they're all first, most of them are first-time players, so they also have to learn. This is like a great experience for pretty much for everybody. You know what? What's great about playoff season is that, you know, there's only so many teams that are there, and you know, everybody else is at home looking at that pads, just like bummed out that they're not playing. For some reason, that always kind of gave me like a, a good feeling. Um, it's good to dominate people. Um, so let's talk about some of your favorite parts of the game. Um, for me, hitting actually wasn't one of my favorite parts. It was really the, the teamsmanship, the camaraderie, the brotherhood that you would build amongst your teammates. Uh, when it comes to you guys, what would you say is your favorite part? Uh, David, we'll start with you. Well, when we like work as a team and just the feeling of like when we get out onto the field and we score a touchdown, it's like, you know, how it's a brotherhood and a family and we all just work together. Yeah, like walking out on the field and you got like your whole crew of boys and like you know all the plays that they know. We all have the same goal. It's empowering. It's a really cool feeling, huh? Yeah. Nice. Uh, Jen, we'll talk a little bit about um, your favorite part of the game. Well, I like when you walk onto the field and I like when you, when you get off with the win. It feels good. Yeah, winning, yeah. that's what it's about. That's really what it's about, guys. All right, winning is the best. Um, you know, losing's important too, because you yeah. learn a lot about yourself when you lose those games. Um, but, you know, winning's a lot more fun than losing. You know what I mean? Uh, but there is, this is a significant lesson to be learned, you know, when you have those, those tough games. Um, Carter, let's talk a little bit about your favorite part of the game. Your alignment. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. My favorite part is mostly um, having, like, him relying on me because I feel like I did something good because he can get the ball away and we can score touchdowns that way. So Now, he's the center. You're the quarterback. Have you guys ever had any, had any fumbled snaps? Yeah. That's yeah, a tough like one, right? <laughs> so, like, I mean, who, who blames who? Who's it on? No, just... Just the team effort? Yeah. <laughs> it's a good way to keep you guys both out of trouble. Um, so we, we got about one minute left in the program. I just want to use this time to say thanks for coming on. Um, also want to kind of publicize what you guys got going on. Um, this Sunday, these guys will be down at Bishop Fenwick, and they'll be um, heading off against the Beverly Black team. Um, this is in the Gladiator level. Now, there are only uh, two playoff games, so this is the first of two. Um, the uh, Lynn Chargers will be well represented. They've got fifth and sixth grade team. Uh, the fifth and sixth grade team over there, as well as these guys, 7th and 8th graders, um, David Bernard, Jarnell Snow, and Carter Clay. Guys, thanks for being on the program. I wish you the best of luck this team. Uh, this, this week, go out there and get a win for us. Uh, why don't we go to this week's Sideline Sportscast. Hello, my name is Maroni Jimenez. I'm here from the Sideline Sportscast. We're here today at Barry Park, interviewing the Lynn Chargers and the head coach. How you doing? My name is Brian Losey. I'm the president of uh, the Lynn Chargers Youth Football and Cheerleading Association. Um, I've been the president for about four years now and the program is established back in 2008 so this is our seventh season. Youth football is an unbiased program where uh, it, it's, it's grade based and age protected where we only have kids of the same age playing together at each level. Uh, Papuana kind of strays from that where they have um, multiple ages and certain age groups that can play together as long as they maintain themselves under a certain weight. We try to instill uh, life lessons for these kids that they'll take throughout their life and you know hopefully make them better, better people as they get older. Why do you like to play football? Because I like to hit people. And what do you like most about it? Running? Running? Why do you like football? Because I like um, having contact with people and like scoring touchdowns. All right. What do you like most about it? Um, running people over and scoring touchdowns. I like the fun and the thrill of the game, the high speed pace of it. If people want to get involved with the Lynn Chargers program, um, we have a web page. It's uh, lynnchargers.com, and then we have a Facebook page which is Lynn Chargers Youth Football and Cheerleading. 
Well, that's it for this week's edition of the Lynn Mass Sportscast. I want to thank you guys for tuning in and make sure to tune in next time. I also want to say thank you to our guests who gave up some time to come on and talk to us. If you at home have a sports story or just want to give us some feedback, you can reach out to us at www.lincamtv.com slash Sportscast. We're also on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We want to say thank you to all of our guests again. That's it for this week's edition of the Lynn Mass Sportscast. From the studio here at Lincam TV, I'm Sean Donahue, wishing you all the best.